Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network, and today I'm going to show you how to install the database needed for the vCenter single sign-on service. So in front of you I've got an RDP session opened to my SQL Server in the lab, and I'm connected as a full domain admin uh, that also has full admin over the SQL uh, database as well. So I'll run the Server Management Studio, and put a period there means login local, and I'm going to authenticate as myself. And again, I've got pretty much God mode over the lab. Just make sure you've got something that has admin uh, or sysadmin over the database so that you can uh, do all the creation and modification of the schema that you need. So all you really need to do is make sure that you have the vCenter installation CD or DVD uh, handy somewhere. Here I've inserted it into the virtual machine. And uh, if you browse to the DVD, there's a folder inside of single sign-on, uh, DB scripts, SSO server, schema, MS SQL. And there we go. There's a bunch of scripts needed uh, to very easily build the SSO database. Specifically, it's these two set up table spaces, set up users. So now I've got the SQL Management Studio open. I can just right click on set up table spaces and click open and get rid of the annoying make it better. There we go. So you'll see the script actually has a decent bit of comments there to help you get through it if you're stuck and you don't have the video handy. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do a fully custom install of the database. We're not going to accept any of the default names. So to start with, you'll want to identify where it says RSA here, which would be the default d database name. And we'll make a change. I'm going to change it to Wall Network. And there's two other places you need to make that change. Down here, we're going to do some settings. We're going to change RSA to Wall Network in those two places. And then the kind of more obvious change, uh, this change me path, where we're going to write the T, there's a database file here, there's the file group name here, and then there's a T log here. We need to change those paths. What I've done is went ahead and grabbed the path to where I normally write my SQL data. It'll be different for you, most likely. Mine's on my E drive. And I'm just going to copy that path and then paste it into the path here. And the second spot. And the third spot right here. So now I've got the path different, and I'm actually going to go ahead and just change the name a little bit too. I'm going to put like a, a wall network, a WN, in front of the name of each file. Uh, there we go. Just to make it a little easier on myself. So what did I do? I changed the database name in three locations, up here, and down here, and down here. And I edited the paths to make sure that I've got a, an appropriate real path to where the data needs to be written. And click Execute. And if you see the command completed successfully, you've done a good job. If you pop open the databases, we'll see there's a brand new database called Wall Network. So right now there's nothing in it, it's not doing anything, and uh, nobody has permissions to it. So you'll need to fire off the second script, which is set up users. Let's open that. Kind of similar, has the same header, some notes, and everything like that. And there's four places that you got to make a change to the database if you're not using the default database name. So I'm not using RSA. So that would be... Ooh. Wall network. Let me copy that and move this back over. So that place, there's the second spot. Here's the third spot and the fourth spot. So now I've told it to go to my database, the new one with the new name that I made. And then there's these change DBA password and change user password. You have to use a password uh, for the two user accounts that SSL is going to want to use. And a lot of people are curious, what do these accounts do? There's an RSA DBA, an RSA user, and you can change those to be whatever you want. I'm going to leave them uh, the way they are. Basically, DBA is going to be the database owner of the SSO database. It's going to be using an account on the database called DBO. And RSA user is going to be mapped to an actual login. Uh, RSA user login will be mapped to an account on the database called RSA user. And it'll be more of just a connection permission allowed. So let's go ahead and change this to something that will work. Everything within the apostrophes, basically the carrots. So uh, delete that whole section and make sure that you use something that's complex. So I might choose password, one, two, three, four, exclamation. Something, you know, it, it's a lab. So don't make it that easy in yours. And I'm actually going to use the same one for both. Now, if you don't use a complex password and you have complexity requirements enabled, it will work. The script will run, uh, but the accounts won't be able to log in, and when you go to install SSO, it'll fail. And you'll wonder, you know, what am I doing wrong? So make sure to use a complex password. So that's been done. That's successful.
Now let's verify that the access was done correctly. So we want to check a couple things. First, go to security and logins. Make sure we see those two accounts. That looks good. And I want to check specifically RSA DBA. Let's get properties on that account. And let's make sure that uh, the user mapping is set up. Good it is. So on that database, it is mapped to a user called DBO. And it's set up as the database owner. So if we go on the database, which in mine is called Wall Network, get properties on it. And we check the permissions. We now see that RSA user is on here. And it should have the connection permission. There we go. So it now is granted the connect uh, permission, which is also what we wanted. And if you drill down even further to the security in that database, you can see here's the users. This is actually RSA DBA. We can check that by getting properties on it. And you'll see the login that it's using is RSA DBA. Uh, and here's the RSA user. So RSA user maps to RSA user. At this point, your database is ready to go, and you're ready to install the vCenter single sign-on service. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.